Ocean Waves is a 1993 Studio Ghibli film directed by Tomomi Mochizuki. The film is made with the goal of giving Studio Ghibli's younger staff members a chance to make a film on a lower budget than other Ghibli films, although the film still ended up going over budget and over schedule. The film has a few smaller themes shown through its characters, like the world being bigger than high school, people aren't always who you remember them being, etc etc, but they all tie into the big theme of the film, growing up. And while a ton of other stories have tackled this theme before, Ocean Waves does it way better than most, mostly thanks to its brilliant direction and phenomenal writing. Our protagonist, Taku, is rather mature for his age, making split-second decisions that other people will ask an authority figure about before even considering, although he doesn't realise the consequences those decisions can have until he loses both of his closest friends. Yutaka is defiant towards authority figures, but also acts irrationally. He has to learn that the world isn't as simple as he thinks and that life isn't really fair, a lesson he directly defies in his first scene, but learns to come to terms with by the end of the film, thanks to his interactions with Taku and Rikiko. Rikiko has to learn the same lessons as Yutaka, but also has to realise that sometimes the pedestal you hold people to is nothing but that, a pedestal, and who those people really are can be so underwhelming compared to who you'd built them up to be. Ocean Waves boasts some really good direction and some phenomenal animation for a film on the smaller budget than it was. It has really good colours in particular. The film uses less complex shading than other anime films, which likely saved on the budget, but it makes all the colours pop more on screen. Combined with the white outlines on characters during certain scenes, makes this film an absolute joy to watch. As well as this, the film has some fantastic visual storytelling. I watched the film for the first time with subs, but then because of a habit and trick I learned from Edgar Wright, I watched the film with no subs and the audio completely off. And I could still get what was going on in most of the scenes just by the animation with absolutely no dialogue. The film uses its visual to tell you everything that's going on in the scene. In the tennis scene, for example, you can tell that Rikiko is doing something important because of how the camera shows her in close-ups completely in her element, taking up the whole frame. It shows her opponent in wides, she's losing, frantically running to the opposite ends of the court, and by also peppering the reaction shots from the boys to show how this is something that they haven't seen before, makes the scene go from just great to phenomenal. The film is absolutely filled to the brim with scenes that need no dialogue at all. This could be a silent film and probably be just as good. The only scenes that don't translate well are scenes where people are on the phone. You can tell something important is happening based on the reactions, but not exactly what's going on unlike other scenes, which would probably make you feel disconnected. The opening scenes also don't do a super good job of giving context with just the visuals and no dialogue, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Film is a visual audio medium. I just wanted to point out how good the direction in the scenes like the tennis scene is, and also the meeting with the dad, the hotel room scene, the cafe scene. Loads more are just amazing, even if you watch them with no sound. While this film definitely isn't perfect, it's brilliant to see what the team is able to do with what they have. The animation doesn't far off the quality of Ghibli's other films, despite the low budget, Said animation is constantly full of life and character, even just the way characters walk is brilliant. The direction is on another level though, like a little detail throughout the film is that the jacket Taku wears throughout the film but is a representation of his brashness. Almost all of his more stubborn decisions are done while he's wearing this jacket, and after he's learned his lesson and we see him years later, he doesn't wear a jacket anymore, he just wears overshirts. The film also shows just how much Ghibli as a company cared about what they produced at the time. This film was over budget and way past its deadline, but Ghibli didn't push it to its release because the people making this film were passionate about it. It isn't just a film to be a film. The art style, the direction, and the over budget they all reflects that. There are so many horror stories, especially nowadays, about media that's rushed to completion. I'm sure you're all thinking of one as I say this. And luckily this wasn't one of them. I think the only real issue with this film is how short it is. I think just a few extra scenes to flesh out the dynamic between Rukuko and Yutaka is all this film really needs. Although, Yutaka does get a bit shafted by the development of Taku and Rukuko, so maybe some more scenes of him would be great too. But even so, it's honestly incredible how this film can get through this plot in just like 72 minutes. It's so quick without feeling too fast paced. Oh, and this film's score is 
brilliant. There are only 10 tracks on the OST and they are all fantastic. I cannot imagine this film without this score by Shigeru Nagata. It's amazing. The score has a lot of tones it just blasts through, from those nostalgic synth pieces like First Impressions to those somber piano melodies like Alone Late at Night, and then a rather brilliant mix of both of these styles in A Tree Light Boulevard in the Wind. But then we also get way more upbeat pieces like A Seaside Street that fit into the scenes they play in perfectly. This film is just amazing, thanks to not having the most complex plot, but still one great and deep enough to be more than worth your time, combined with this fantastic direction, oh my god did I talk about the score enough. This film isn't perfect, yeah, but it communicates messages that still hold up and messages that people should still hear, I need to hear it. It has some of the most accurate teenagers I've ever seen in anything too, so I think anyone writing a teen drama could take inspiration. And it's just a film I don't want to be forgotten, although it unfortunately kind of is. The film has no English dub, has barely any English release, and is completely drowned by the zenith of perfection that is Studio Ghibli's other filmography. It's such a shame that this film isn't remembered by many. Everyone I know who's seen it saw it recently on Netflix, and hopefully thanks to that more people will see it. And also maybe with my recently inflated sub count I can get a few more people to watch this film. It's some of the most fun I've had watching a film in such a long time. I just love everything about it. And I think the people watching this, if you like my content and like what I talk about, then you'll like it too. It has all the great things people love about Ghibli films. Fun, well written but not too complex characters, nice and smooth animation, clear direction, a top notch score. The only real difference is that it tells a much more human story without the more fantastical elements of the more iconic Ghibli films. So check it out, it's worth your time, trust me.